Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. This thing is working, right? You able to hear me? You can hear me? Oh, good. I'm reminded of uh, a Catholic priest. I'm a Christian, so you, my friends, who are Catholics, you are also believers. We, we worship the same God. Uh, this priest goes to the uh, pulpit, and he goes, is this thing working? You know, there must be something wrong with this thing. And the congregation response responded, and also with you. You see, the, the, the Catholic Church has this responsorial psalm. So when the priest was testing the mic, he says, there must be some, something wrong with this thing. And the congregation responded, and also with you. <laughs> My presentation really is to look at Kajem in you know, mining and um, uh, its relevance in this gem field sector and the structure and setup of uh, this um, um, uh, industry or this company in the gem field sector. Do you recognize this young lady? You that uh, film enthusiasts, do you recognize this young lady? What's her name? Who? Who? Mina, uh, this young lady was voted the sexiest woman in the world this year. And I was saying to Suresh, um, you had the sexiest woman in your presence at the mine, at Kajem. And he said, yes. So I said, what did you do with her? He says, at least I hugged her. I said, only? <laughs> uh, this is the face of uh, uh, Kajem Emerald worldwide and um, I, I can tell you ladies and gentlemen that um, uh, as a board would like to encourage more and more local faces on uh, Zambian Emeralds um, so you s sooner or later you'll be seeing uh, more local faces as well. But we use this young lady because she's an international celebrity and in marketing you have to have a strong figure worldwide that will market your products. Kajem is a collaboration between two institutions um, and uh, you have Gemfields PLC which is a UK or London uh, listed uh, company that owns 75% of the uh, company and you have the government of the Republic of Zambia owning 25% of, of the company. Uh, once upon a time the government of the Republic of Zambia was the majority shareholder in this uh, enterprise and um, uh, the management then was with the Hagura group I was privileged then to sit on the board of Kajem many years ago, uh, representing government interests. There's another collaboration between the government of the Republic of Zambia and Gemfields PLC, uh, where both entities uh, own 50%, and that is in the Kariba Amethyst Mine. I must tell you that uh, the 50% that uh, government owns in Kariba Amethyst is held by the CCMIH. And I can also tell you that uh, there are plans by government to transfer its 25% ownership in Kajem to the CCMIH so that uh, government should not be seen to be in business. Government's business is to govern. Uh, the business of business is to run business, isn't it? And the, the mining um, uh, investment uh, organ of government is SCMIH. Those discussions are still going on and will be told when that materializes. This is some of the activities that take place at uh, Kajem. It's 
are open cast mine, uh, a lot of earth has been moved and those of you that have visited, for instance, in Changa Open Pit, you will see something similar at, um, at um, where's the light here? Is it this one? That's better. You will see something of that sort and that is what we are doing in a, it's, it's, it's an open cast mine uh, once upon a time like i said to you when i sat on the board of kajem we did not have this kind of mining technology uh, we were sinking a hole blasting and and you know then chisel men would go down there mr devilton i will tell you chisel men would go down with their chiseling and, and so forth we have opened up this mine into a huge operation we are in this regard a pioneer in the gem field uh, industry with this kind of mining uh, technology the kind of earth that is moved on a monthly basis as we open up this uh, sorry is uh, somewhere in the region of 750 tons of earth that is moved on a monthly basis i know that some of the mining companies some of the mining operations that are taking place in the emerald industry they've been to our site to see uh, what um, uh, what we do uh, so there's there's a lot of rock handling there's a lot of movement of S uh, in order that we go to the product that we all call Emirates. Gemfields acquired a 75% stake in this company somewhere in the year 2008 and uh, you'll observe prior to their acquisition this was the operations that we were under in terms of production uh, in millions of carats and you'll, have, you'll observe the trend since this period in terms of production you can see some spiraling uh, which has been very in a very very good and this is because of the investments that um, have taken place in this uh, company. In terms of uh, production, per million carats, since acquisition, again, you would see the trend has been going up and up and up. And these are some of the figures that our colleagues in ZRA have because these figures are submitted every quarter. Um, we are very, very transparent in what we do. In terms of revenue, again, you can see the trend this was before, in 2005, the total revenue was about $6.7 million. It rose to 12.3, 11.1, and in 2008 at acquisition, you're, you're averaging $8.8 .8 million. And since the acquisition by Gemfields, you can see the trend. There was a loss somewhere here, and uh, we're now Thank you. This was uh, the last year's turnover, uh, two years ago, sorry, about 31.6 million. And uh, last year was a bumper, we had um, uh, 77 in a million dollars. And th that is why, you know, the, the, the emerald industry and, and the association, when we talk, uh, when government is talking about um, um, holding auctions locally these are some of the facts and figures that we should be looking at where would we get the best return 
uh, I think for me that is a cardinal question. Are you going to get the best return if we auction locally or are we going to get the best return if we go to the market? Now, one, one of the things that you must appreciate and understand, and in this I'm addressing my colleagues in the, in the sector, Zambia is not the only producer of emeralds. There are other countries that produce emeralds. You know, currently the, the best you know, uh, emerald is produced out of Colombia. Uh, I think Zambia ranks second or third after Brazil. And our colleagues take their produce to the international market. Uh, now we must ask ourselves, will we be having uh, a comparative advantage if we invited the buyers to come here or we go where the buyers are? Those are some of the cardinal questions that we should, and those are some of the issues that I've raised with the minister in several meetings that I've held with him uh, over, this, over this issue. They still remain unresolved and that is why we said let's have a summit of this nature so that all the stakeholders come together, discuss this thing, and the resolutions of the summit will make a presentation uh, to, the, to the minister. What about the profit levels? In 2005, there was 646. Now these figures have already been captured by the Zambia Revenue Authority. Was in, in their presentation, you saw that there was just about 1.9% revenue from the gem fields. Is it 1% or 1.9%? 1.9% and about 1% of that is from one industry, one company. Uh, because we, we, our figures are transparent. We, we give them to... to uh, to we made a loss in 2007, <coughs> we made a loss, and we made a loss, and you observe that there was no taxes paid, we only started paying tax somewhere, was it last year or uh, 2011 and 2012, uh, because we had to take advantage of the uh, tax credit arising out of the losses, isn't it? That is perfectly allowable under the law. It's not evasion, it's legal. If you make a loss, you and accrue your losses and you have tax credits. And, and those were accrued and given by ZRA. There's also a lot of talk about value addition now. In the discussions that I've had, uh, and I'm relatively new as chairman of the board of, uh, of Kajem, I've discovered that the gemstone industry is very, very sensitive. Extremely sensitive. There's rumors and innuendos and, you know, all kinds of things. There was a time I can tell you, I, 20, 20 hours or 21 hours at night, I get a call. Chairman, uh, there's a theft at Kajem. 21 hours, who has entered our strong room to steal emeralds? No, 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 there's a theft there. You must send police. 21 hours? I call <laughs> the CEO, what is going on there? No, sir, everything is fine. But those rumors and innuendos get to the ears of government. And that's what creates this perception that this industry is full of thieves. Now, those rumors and innuendos, ladies and gentlemen, do not come from outside. They come from within. Speaking for gem, uh, car gem uh, mining, some of the measures that were put in place is security. To stop when the minister was talking about secondary industry, that's what I kept saying in the meetings with them. You see, there's a secondary industry. And said, no, 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 chairman, don't say secondary industry. Say illegal industry, illegal. You know, I said, because these fellows, there's so much emirates on the market. Now, we put measures of security in place. 
And ladies and gentlemen, we monitor this, and I can give you statistics, how people steal and how we have managed to reduce those thefts. And because there's a reduction in the thefts, the illegal market is not happy because they've been deprived of a product which they readily sell at undervalue to some of our buyers abroad. And because of that, they create mayhem in Roma Mongari. And unfortunately, our politicians listen to such kind of rumor. And the, some of the decisions that which they make are based on that kind of rumor. I was saying to the minister, as a minister, it's interesting that you receive all those reports. They don't come to me. The man was very honest with me. He said to me, you see, Bill, if the, if the rose reports come to you, these chaps who paid all these rumors, know that you just say, just get out of my sight. Because you know the procedures that you put in place. And if there's any breaches in the procedures that were put in place, I will have a report. But because we are depriving the illegal market of produce, Roma's pedal. Let me also as I talk about this, address our buyers. You are also contributing to this problem in the country. Because, I mean, we don't blame you. You come here, Mr. Litana has a, you know, a stone. Eh? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm referring to my, my older brother, Mr. Litana, because we're very good friends. I can uh, use him as an example. He has a stone which he illegally acquired. There's no cost to him. He gives it to you at half the value. He's made a profit, isn't it? Don't buy from illegals. Help us by not buying from illegals. Buy from established mines. And we have a number of them. We have Miku mine there. We have... Uh, Mr. Litana's mine, we have Kajem, we have Grizzly Mining, we have... These are the licensed miners. One of the things, I, I know you to be asking too much of you, one of the things you should be doing before so, when someone brings a stone to you, ask them whether they're licensed to. Ask them whether they're licensed to. You know? There is a talk about value addition. Now, in the many discussions that we've had about value addition, you know, there's talk, oh, no, no, it, value addition is from the pit to the final polished product. All that must be done locally. Good argument. And I endorse that argument that we should be moving towards having a final polished product locally. But that takes time to develop the technology and the capabilities to do that. So in the meantime, we do what we have to do. Grading and sorting is value addition. Reliability of the product, ladies and gentlemen, is value addition. Because the, the customer wants to see that this product is reliable. Marketing of the product is value addition. Service delivery to the satisfaction of the customer is value addition. So when we talk about value addition, there's several grades, several stages depending on the capabilities that you have and the technologies that you have. <coughs> a 
let me move on to talk about taxation quickly because uh, uh, Mr. 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 Nkonde, Nonde, Mr. Nonde from ZRA, where have I gone now? Okay, that's where we are. Has already alluded to 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 this, and we gave him authority to refer to the uh, figures by Kajem. Because, like I said, we are very transparent. We declare religiously to the institutions that government has uh, provided to regulate this industry. And so far, Mr. Nonde and his group have not found us wanting. So, you know. This is when the acquisition was made. And like I said in the previous slide, there was no taxes paid during this period. In 2011, we paid royalties of $1.5 million. Now, royalties are chargeable, Mr. Nod, isn't it, if I'm correct, on the gross revenue declared. And last year, we declared $3.9 million in royalties on the gross earnings. This has nothing to do with profitability. Right? What you have sold. Last auction, last auction we sold a certain number and uh, under the Act, the ZRA, the Income Tax Act, I mean, is it 2012 amendment when the 6% royalty was introduced? you pay 6% on what you have sold. And we've been paying. In terms, in terms of uh, corporate tax, again, we have been paying religiously. We paid nine million dollars last year on the earnings now if you want to uh, calculate the profitability the, the corporate tax the corporate tax is on the basis of your net profit okay uh, those of you that are business i'm a lawyer so you know uh, pardon me numbers are not my strong <laughs> um, but corporate tax was paid at 35%, is it, Mr. Nonde? Corporate tax is at 35% on the profitability of Kajem last year at $9 million. So we are complying with the revenue uh, regulations. Now, let me just give you an indication of some of the activities that we have. Why are we not moving? These are uh, just pictures of the auctions that we hold um, I think these these pictures are from the Singapore uh, auction but we had an auction just about a few months ago here and there was a lot of activities I can I see some of the guys that were here and were interacting with that thank you for coming back and that shows confidence to um, uh, in the Zambian market Now, the next slide I'd like to look at some of the earnings from abroad. We held auctions last year in Jaipur, Singapore, Johannesburg, uh, and London, and the earnings were very good. One of the arguments that I've said to government is that, look, last auction, we made a certain number. And by all in, to all intents and purposes, it was a reasonable return on our investment, very reasonable return. But I still think that if we had taken that low grade that we auctioned here, uh, to Jaipur would have probably had 
a lot more, a little bit more earning. The same high grade which was auctioned in Jaipur, we earned $26 million. The same low grade which we auctioned here about a few months ago, we earned $15 million. Now, gentlemen, you ought to be something wrong with you as a businessman to deliberately lose $10 million. Now, these are some of the arguments I've taken to government. Gentlemen, here are the statistics. And as lawyers, we work on evidence, isn't it? And the evidence is there. You want to lose $10 million deliberately? Mr. Nond, even you as a revenue authority person would say, look, there's something wrong with you, Mr. Nond. Because if you lose that kind of money, who is at the ultimate loser? Who is the ultimate loser? The country. I'll be, I'll be returning to that in a while. We publish everything. Mr. Nonde will tell you, these are the figures that they have in ZRA. These are the figures that they have at the Ministry of Mines. These are the figures that they have at the Ministry of Finance. One of the things that I said to my colleagues when I joined the board is that, gentlemen, guys, or folks, or whatever it is that you want to call them, I am very pedantic about transparency. So if I see that you guys are fiddling, I have a reputation to protect. I walk out. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm called state council. It's not easy to attain that honor. And I don't want my reputation to be messed up by people who are not disclosing uh, facts and figures. My colleagues in the industry if we want to shake away the perception that this industry is full of thieves or cartels worse than the Sicilians, transparency, accountability is absolutely important. Make your money, but make it legitimately. It's Ama Tumbuka, and in Tumbuka we say, we have a saying that a name is worth a lot more than your money. I would rather die a poor man, but held as a responsible man, than die a rich man with a reputation of being a thief. So we, we, we publish everything, that's uh, the second lot of the publications, auctions were held, how much was earned, what was declared. And one of the things, one of the, things uh, uh, the minister said to me is that, look, chairman, we're not sure, we're not sure what you guys are earning and whether you're bringing all the money to the country. I said to him, we have all the facts and figures, and now, thanks to government innovation, the statutory instrument number 33, uh, number 32, sorry, statutory instrument number 32 of 2013, made under the Bank of Zambia Act, where all export earnings all export earnings will be traced. So I said, in terms of regulatory framework, we now have a piece of legislation that would deal with all the cheats in the industry. So there's no problem. Declare your products. We're doing it in Kajam.
employment we now have about five just just over just under just under 550,000 uh, direct employees uh, at Kajem um, and then the of, of, co of course we have we have a, a contractor who is opening up opening up all this soil and, and, and those have their own um, um, employees as well we have an incentive scheme for workers you produce a certain level you get your bonus that incentivizes workers so that they are all part and parcel of what is happening so far we have paid about 1.9 million dollars in incentives to employees because they have done well because they have done well our safety record is impeccable we have a certificate awarded to Kajem Mining by the Mines and Safety, the Mines Safety Department, where we have recorded touch wood, zero accidents so far. And we thank God for that. I, I applaud the, the workers, the, the managers, for ensuring that the safety record uh, is good and would like it to continue. Uh, that way. These are some of the uh, press coverages on Zambia's emeralds captured by the economist, the loop, uh, uh, professional jewelers, and, and these are international um, uh, uh, publications. And look at this one by uh, by. Uh, World Land Trust, the green allure of Zambia's ethical emirates. I, I like that uh, caption. And I'll be talking about how we do this ethical uh, uh, mining in, in a short while. More captions on Zambia's emeralds and look at this the diamond world gem fields unveils exquisite Zambia's emeralds we would like to see Zambian emeralds attain the levels of the beer diamonds Color is what people are going for now. You know, diamonds are always um, colorless, eh? Colorless. You buy your lovely lady a, a green ring or a green necklace and so forth, it will always attract immediate attention. So that's what we like to, to see on Zambian emeralds of Zambia's emeralds and again those are just you know continuation of publications that's uh, a variety of products out of uh, Zambia's emeralds let me talk about ethical mining this captures areas of our social investment, environmental investment, taking care of the environment, taking care of the social communities in which we work. In, under environmental investment, we have carbon reduction projects, tree planting, mine filing, conversion of used mines into lakes, you know those holes that, uh, those of you that are in the Emerald Ender, those holes that you leave, uh, fill, fill them up with water, plant fish in there, that becomes a source of 
revenue and livelihood for the communities. But just make sure that children don't drown in those lakes. Eh? Social investments, we are involved with local schools, uh, clinics, a farmer's project, the HIV AIDS programs, and, and, and so forth. Just a word on schools. One of the, th one of the things that government said to us when we, and, and clinics, when we met with them, ah, no, 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 corporate social responsibility. Yes, minister, we are responsible, a responsible company, and will ensure that schools in Lufuanyama, clinics in Lufuanyama are upgraded to decent levels. I've said to my colleagues on the board, one of the schools that we worked on, I would like to see it upgraded to a secondary school. One of the clinics that we've given the communities there, I like it upgraded to a, maybe a 20, 30 bed main hospital, fully equipped and handed over to, to government particularly a maternity ward, because I see a lot of women going long distances from Lufanyama to Sakili for for, to Kalurushi for deliveries, and we would like to see that stopped. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are a responsible company. Look at the faces of I want to emphasize this gentleman here. You see what he's carrying? What is he carrying? Lettuce. Lettuce. That is the farmer's program. All the produce that the farmers who we have helped with initial capital produce, we buy it to use it to feed our employees. So there's no single farmer who has produce which goes to waste. You see that healthy baby? That smile of a child in a school? Sports? Health. Let me conclude by saying this. Oh, these are the schools that we have done. Kajem and government, a partnership, or what have I done now? From the mine to the market to a smile on a child. Thank you very much.